Hey, Ray Delvecchio here from WebsiteProfitCourse.com, and today we're going to talk about something really fundamental, and that's how websites work. And what I mean by that is when you type in your domain into a browser and press enter, do you actually know what is happening behind the scenes? How does the browser know where to get that information from? And this is especially important if you're just setting up a website. You got to have a basic understanding of how things work to get it going. And I think this is really going to help you out. So this all comes down to what's known as the domain name system, which you might see the acronym DNS. As I mentioned, we're going to talk about it in simple terms. But if you look at this Wikipedia page, I mean, look at how complex this is. There's 15 different sections. And even I, as a computer person, don't fully understand all the details of it because I don't need to. So that's probably your situation. So so without further ado, let's dig into the steps. The first step, of course, is buying your domain. So you can pick any domain registrar across the internet, and the biggest example most likely is GoDaddy.com. And most companies offer everything nowadays. You can get domain hosting and a website builder or templates on your provider. Regardless of where you go, it's going to cost you somewhere between $10 to $20 a year for your domain name. So I'll link up a video in the top right with my tips on how to choose a good domain name. Next up, you got to choose hosting. And like I said, if you choose hosting with the same company that you get your domain name with, if you get them in one shot, they're going to be linked together immediately. You likely won't have to do some of these technical steps, but it's still worthwhile to know in case you ever do. So in this example, I'm going to talk about HostGator. They're one of the most affordable ways to get set up. In general, you're going to pay somewhere between $50 to $100 per year for what's known as self-hosted. So that's what this is. If you buy your own hosting with a hosting company, and you purchase your domain with a domain provider, and you link them together, you're self-hosting your website, which ultimately means that you do have to take care of you know, some security stuff, make sure that it's up to date, that kind of thing. So that's why I say that the price is based on performance, the amount of features that you get, and your skills. Of course, you're gonna pay extra if you want a really simple platform that doesn't have all the bells and whistles and doesn't you know, give you access to all the technical stuff. Whereas if you want the access to the power, you're gonna to have to learn a few things, but you're gonna pay a little bit less in the end for that. Now here's a confirmation email that I got from HostGator when I purchased one of their hosting packages. You can see here that I have the Hatchling plan, which is the most affordable that you can get with one website and one domain. And I just wanna mention that you might get two accounts and your one account is to manage your billing with HostGator, whereas this account that you're looking at on here, this is how you manage the hosting control panel, which is all your technical stuff. So I wanna point out a few things in this email and we're gonna reference this a little later in the video. So stick around for that so you can see how we connect these things. The first thing is your control panel URL. So this is where you log in to your hosting and HostGator uses cPanel, which cPanel is hosting control panel software that a lot of web hosts use across the internet. It's basically the standard, whereas some of the more expensive companies, they do build their own user interface, so it's a little bit easier. cPanel gives you a lot of options that can be a little bit overwhelming, but you're probably only going to use one or two of them in reality. And then the next important thing here is your name servers. So these are what you need to link up your domain name to your new hosting account. You have to go into your domain settings, which we'll dig into right after this. And you have to update them so that your domain provider knows that your website is hosted elsewhere. Now, ultimately, every website has an IP address. So that's what this server IP is beneath that. And the reason I mention this is because when you update your name servers, that affects both your website and your email. Basically, this is saying that HostGator is now going to manage my website hosting, and I'm going to run my email, my custom domain email through HostGator. But you can also separate email and web. So you can have one service doing your email and another service like HostGator doing your website. And in that case, there's a custom DNS setting that you have to set the IP address. Now, again, this is advanced. I don't think you're going to need to do this, but I wanted to mention this because I've done a previous video talking about this topic and I got a couple questions regarding email accounts. If you want to see how I set up my email addresses, I will link up a video in the top right here. I basically use forwarders to forward all of my custom domain email to one single Gmail inbox, and that's a personal inbox, so I don't pay anything for that. So let's consider this information. Let's keep it in mind and we'll see exactly how we can use this. So like I said, you have to go into your domain settings, take your name server information that you got when you started your hosting account and update your domain settings with that custom name server. And what I was just talking about was if you use these custom records and they're just called DNS records, you have the A record and that tells you where your site is located. That's the IP address. 
And if you wanted to use a separate service for your email, for instance, there's one called Mailgun that's used for developers. So again, this is like a situation where you're probably going to be an advanced user if you have to do this but that's called the MX record. And when you just set the name servers, that's basically saying that both of these are gonna be under that top company that is handling the name servers. This is a graphic showing what we just talked about. I hope this kind of explains it. So a visitor is gonna go to their browser, type in a domain name, that's gonna go to the DNS server. Your internet service provider is gonna look up that domain name and try and find the IP address under the DNS server records. That IP address is gonna come from you updating your domain registrar settings with your name servers. So like I said, that's what links up HostGator, which you see on the right here, to your domain name. Now next up, I'm gonna show you on GoDaddy how you update your settings. So if you go to your domain manager, you click into your domain and you're gonna find these additional settings. And what you wanna look for is this button, Manage DNS. That is how you change your name servers. By default, GoDaddy's just gonna link them to you know, their name servers. You have to go in there and customize it. And you're gonna to go to a second page that shows you your name servers here. And as you can see, I updated them to what we saw in the email previously, ns6177.hostgator.com. And normally you do have two of them where it's the first one plus one. So this one is ns6178.hostgator.com. Now it's important to note that when you update your name servers, that switch doesn't happen immediately. It can take anywhere between 48 to 72 hours to be propagated across the entire internet so that if somebody goes to your website in Spain or Africa or Asia or the United States, they see the new hosting. So the rule of thumb is that you want to keep your old hosting active for roughly three to four days, if not a little bit longer, when you're transitioning to new hosting. So that happens smoothly. You know, some people might be seeing the old website. Some people might be seeing the new website but nobody goes to a broken website. And then after 72 hours, everything should be good and updated. And there's a really cool website that I use all the time to check these hosting changes, and that's dnschecker.org. You can check everything here, all these individual records. So these are the records that are available to you. You can see that we have our MX record and our A record. If you just click NS, that's your top level name server. So you can put in your domain name and check your records and it's gonna check them across all these data centers across the world. So you'll see that when you make your change, some of these are gonna have the new one, some of these are gonna have the old one. And then when you check again a week later, they should all have the new one. So I hope that wasn't too technical for you. These are the two most affordable ways to set up your website. Obviously every website has HTML code. That's what's generated from you know the software behind the scenes. Like WordPress is run with PHP code and that generates the HTML. Now, if you don't know anything about WordPress, that's a content management system that is the most popular one across the web. It powers something like 50 to 60% of the web. And that's been my choice. I've been using it since, uh, I want to say like 2009, 2010, something around there. Now, if you look at the other website builders that you may have heard of, like Squarespace and Wix, they bundle these together. So they are their own hosting platform. They control all of the settings behind the scenes, and they create the options that are available for you to customize. Whereas with HostGator and WordPress, you could pretty much customize everything down to the code level. I used to really rail against these companies like Squarespace and Wix. I still don't like Wix, but I think Squarespace has evolved enough that they actually do put out very nice website templates. Again, you're not gonna get as much power, but if you're just looking for a really basic website and you don't wanna deal with some of these technical details and you're okay with paying a little bit more because of that, then Squarespace might not be a bad option. But in my experience, a lot of people do hit a limit with a platform like that. I say this all the time. I have a little plugin on my Google Chrome browser where I check to see high level websites, you know, people that are successful and what technology they're using behind the website. You know, hand to God, 80 to 90% use WordPress. I know I said that WordPress powers maybe like 50 to 60% of the web, but most high level websites that are not custom apps like Twitter or Instagram, that kind of thing, they use WordPress. And that's because WordPress is free to pay. All you really have to pay for with WordPress is your domain and your hosting. You can get set up with WordPress for free, but WordPress also has a lot of paid upgrades Third-party developers create what's known as themes and plugins. The themes are what give you your design, so you can kind of swap out designs using the themes. They're just like templates. And the plugins give you added functions. So you might have a plugin to do social media sharing or a plugin to help with your SEO. You get to really customize how you want to build your website with WordPress, and it's flexible for all types of budgets. So ultimately, that's why I recommend it for the beginner. You're learning the most powerful thing to start. It might take you a little bit longer in the beginning to learn it, 
but I promise you down the road, once you do, you're gonna realize why it was the right choice. Now, if you didn't notice, like I said, I've been using WordPress for a while and my entire channel is mostly WordPress tutorials. So make sure you subscribe, check out my other videos if you wanna learn some stuff. I did put together a little bit more of a curated series to learn WordPress so you have a really good overview of everything. So to access that, you can go to this link, websiteprofitcourse.com slash WP101. I'll also include that in the description below. And if you think that you're ready to start your website right now, it only takes about 10 minutes to get set up. I got a tutorial that I will link up to show you exactly how to do it with HostGator. If you go to websiteprofitcourse.com slash hosting, you can see that. And just so you know, I'm an affiliate with HostGator, but I am a user as well. So I get a small commission if you set up a website. That obviously helps support my channel and my website so that I can create free tutorials for you exactly like this one. To get a great discount as well, you can use code WPC1. That's my partner code, up to 62% off. So once again, all of these links will be in the description below. Last but not least, give this video a thumbs up if it helped you out. And if you have any questions, I'd love to hear them in the comments. The big takeaway is I want you to just take action because it's so easy to get overwhelmed with all this technical stuff. What I found is that as long as you can figure out a process and repeat those steps over and over again, you'll be okay. So go ahead and do that. Make sure you start your website as soon as you can. I know you're going to learn a lot and you're going to have fun. Thanks so much for watching. I'll link up a couple other videos here if you want to keep on learning.